Hello everybody, Sergeant Soldier, and welcome back to another Brick and Rust. And today, we're going to be looking at the floating chest exploit. And as you can see here, yeah, the chest float. Now this one comes from my new friend, Desire the God. And I actually thought this was fixed a long time ago. Because not only one, could you place chests in walls and they would go, and they'd go any direction. Slanted, sideways, whatever. But there are other ways to float chests and whatnot. And they fixed all those. So to see that this one still works was a little surprising. So here's how this goes. Basically, what we're going to do is, and it works on sheet and stone walls, by the way, uh, we're going to remove all these chests, and we're going to start building it again. Now, as you can see here, the chests are just about 50% through both walls. This is very important, because if it's too far one direction or the other, the chests are going to break, and it takes a little bit of practice to get it to work right. So you're going to take a shelving unit, and you're going to place it down right about there, and we're going to turn the chests, let's see... I think I, I might be in a good spot, but it'll also work on the bottom shelf as well. It will not work on the top shelf because the chest is not embedded in the wall enough. So I think that's on the right spot there. Go down in here. We're going to place a wall. We'll just do a stone wall. Now we'll come back around. We remove the chest. Or not the chest, the shelf. Remove the shelf. Oh, look, it worked. So yeah, as you can see here, I think this top one is a little bit more than 50%. There is a little bit of give and take with it. However, if it's more than that, I would imagine more than that, it's going to break because it took me quite a few tries to get it to work. So there's one really cool thing about this that makes it actually very viable for your own bases. For one, it makes it easier to jump up stuff, right? Like you can climb up your base using these chests pretty easily. Number two, if you code lock these, they're going to have to break them to get the stuff out, right? So we're going to go through here and we have a, a loot room, you know, fairly typical. And we have two chests, one that says stuff and one that says boom. Now, the stuff chest has got a bunch of stuff in it, and if you heard the beep, it's code lock. You see the code lock right there. Same with the boom chest, it's got a bunch of stuff in it. Now watch what happens when I break both chests. Okay, now only two, three of the items, the stones, a little bit of wood, and some metal fragments popped out on this side. And that would too. On the other side of the wall, everything fell because the chest was still 50% on the other side. Same goes with the boom chest. If you break this, now this one, a lot of the stuff fell on this side of the wall, probably because the chest was either 50-50 or somewhat more sticking out this way, but you still had a lot of stuff fall on the back side which if this is inside of your base, the Raiders would essentially have to blow this wall just to get the loot that was in there. So that could be actually very useful when it comes to trying to protect your loot or to the point to where if you don't want them to access your loot, doing this will help save it. Also, this makes for good drop-off chests. So if this is outside your base, let's say this is the, the one door, random door, you walk in here, these are all drop-off chests. There's no other way in the base from this point, but on the inside here, you know, you got a door here, you can access all the chests, you can do whatever, and then, I don't know, walk into the rest of your base this way. It would be pretty useful, I think. So, this is one exploit that I, I think I personally like. It would be not too bad to use in a live server. I might end up using it just to see how it goes, especially for the drop-off chest or even a loot room, where these walls are actually not sheet metal, but armored metal, to the point where they have to waste a lot of C4 to blow into it. I think that would be pretty viable for the actual game. So, Sergeant Solge, Brick and Rust, and we're floating chests in the walls, and it's actually pretty damn useful, and we'll see you in the next Brick and Rust video. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for watching this episode. If you want to see more great content from Private Astro or myself, please hit that subscribe button and click on any of the videos above. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next Sergeant Soul or Private Astro video. Bye-bye.